the strap around your waist. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am here in Tulum with my best friend. It is her college graduation and birthday upcoming. So we are here in Mexico, obviously following all the COVID protocols. Um, but while I'm here, right next to our hostel is actually this place that does 5-MEO DMT. So this is going to be my first time trying it. Um, hopefully you guys can follow me along on the journey. I don't know how much of it I can actually record, but stay tuned to check it out. And look at the cenote that we have all to ourselves. Beautiful. taking 5-MeO-DMT and Bufo itself I know very little about. I've only watched a few videos by Hamilton Morris. I know it contains 5-MeO-DMT and Bufo Tinin or something. Um, but this will be my first time being kind of led or guided by a shaman also. So I'm feeling good feeling refreshed. Went to go see the sunrise on the beach. So it's going to be a good day. We are here. We're now back home. Um, as you can tell, I did not record the live experience of me taking the Bufo, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because it probably would have been really cringy for me to rewatch, and I probably wouldn't have even uploaded it. Um, your girl kind of went hysteric during it, um, but I'll do my best to explain and kind of like reenact everything that went down and also share all the crazy synchronicities that were around it. So to start off, as I mentioned that morning, I woke up really early to see the sunrise from the beach. Um, and along with the sunrise, there were a lot of other very significant celestial things going on that day. I coincidentally planned that trip on the day that was the solar eclipse. There was a total solar eclipse going across South America, which I was supposed to be attending, but didn't because the festival was canceled due to COVID. Um, but as you can see from this painting from uh, the Oregon eclipse several years ago, the solar eclipse is a very significant thing in my life. And that was an event I was really looking forward to. So I thought that was kind of cool that it happened to be on the same day that the actual eclipse was on. December 14th, 2020 was also the day of a new moon. And I also saw my zodiac constellation in the sky, Pisces. So yeah, overall there was a lot of these like alignments with the universe that I just found to be really 
exciting. It felt right. So after a very relaxing morning, being by the beach, uh, walking a lot, uh, being fasted on water, I arrived at the DMT place and was taken into the TP by the trip sitter. I'm just going to call him a trip sitter because I did not feel that he was a true shaman, um, unfortunately. But so he led me into the TP and sat me right in the center. Uh, we did a little bit of breathing practice. He told me to practice deep, full exhales to the side and then a low sipping 15 second inhale to the center to prepare for inhaling the bufo. So I practiced for a few minutes. He packed up the glass pipe with the bufo and put it to my lips and I inhaled and it was supposed to be a slow inhale for 15 seconds. By the time he got to 10, I was already starting to get a little hazy and kind of pulled back and he told me keep going. So I went one more, did another deep inhale, got to the count of maybe 11 or 12 and I just shot out. I just went into a dream state, couldn't even make it to the 15 seconds and fell back. So I fell back here on the pillow in the middle of the teepee and then blacked out. Next thing I know, I'm on the complete bottom of the teepee in fetal position. And I kind of like wake up in a haze, like I just woke up from sleeping. And I don't recall what I had dreamt or seen that time I was down. I don't know how long I was down there or how I got from here to here, but I just kind of got up in a haze. And obviously the 5-AMEO DMT was still very strong in my system because I did not really understand where I was. I kind of looked around and I saw the trip sitter guy sitting there. He was kind of meditating while there was music playing. And it felt like I was in some weird middle state, like I was in between life and death, in between two different dimensions or something. And because the guy was just sitting there, it felt like he was some sort of anchor to bring me back to reality. So if he was sitting right here, I got up, looked at him, and got right in front of him and copied his seating and just stared at him. Yes, you can pretend to be him, Suki. Sit. Go boy. And because I needed something to bring me back to reality, I put both my hands on his knees. Still, this didn't seem like it was bringing me to reality enough. I still felt really hazy. Like it was like I was in a smoke filled room and everything kind of trailed. Like it was a very weird gray middle state. And so I kind of pointed like eye to eye asking him to make eye contact with me. So I sat there making eye contact with him for I don't know how long. <laughs> um, and then I tried to like signal that I wanted to sync our breathing and maybe he didn't understand me or something. So he didn't do it. And because I didn't feel that connection of being on the same plane with him and he wasn't breathing at the same time as me, I went to like touch his face. Um, <laughs> in retrospect, this is probably super uncomfortable for him, but you know, he does this all the time. He should have been prepared for it. But so I'm like sitting there touching his face, like trying to make eye contact with him to like bring me back into this world. Um, and he kept like looking away or like looking down. Again, for him, it was probably uncomfortable. But for me, this seemed like he was being distrustful, that he was being deceitful and not wanting to allow me back into the world. Like I thought he was this middle guy conduit of the experience that was going to bring me back and was not granting me that. Um, so I started to feel like this, like loss of control and darkness coming. 
and the darkness that was coming was very similar to the black death feeling I had in my one DMT trip, if you've watched that video. And I started feeling fear and I noticed I was basing all of my fear and trust and light onto him. So I started to instead focus in. I was still sitting there kind of holding on to him as a stability support type thing. Um, but I started focusing on my inner breath. And I noticed as everything got darker and I was having more worries and doubts and distrust, that's when things started to feel darker and black. Um, I was getting consumed by the fear. And I felt with each inhale, it was like a gradient, like the light was coming from up here. And with each inhale, I was pushing down the darkness, pushing down the darkness. And then each time I would start to question it or be doubtful, I would feel the darkness come back up. So I just focused on the breathing, let go of all fear. And my breath started getting deeper and deeper. And the light got like bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, with the final deep, deep breath, all the darkness shot out. And I just felt a total release. I shot up my arms and I fell back. Like it felt like a full body or like mental orgasm or something. Like <sighs> describing this moment, this feeling in words does not do it justice. Um, but it felt like I had reached a state of like nirvana or bliss and like I had completely excreted all the darkness and doubt and trauma that was in me. I pushed it out with my breath and trusted the universe and fully surrendered. Um, but then after I fell back, I don't know how long I was out again. I think I maybe for a few seconds was out on my back again. Um, and then I opened my eyes and I was like, wow, like a little baby that had just been born. Um, everything like felt brand new. I didn't know where I was again because it was in a teepee. It was just like, I felt like I was in a womb or something and had just been born. And then the trip sitter shaman guy peeps up over me and looks down and I had no idea who he was. Like I had totally dissociated from reality. I knew I was on a psychedelic. I knew I was on 5-MeO-DMT, but I forgot that I was in a teepee with a trip sitter. I thought I had I thought I had crossed over into another dimension. <laughs> um, like that sounds so crazy, but I was laying there and when he peeped over, he didn't even look like the trip sitter. It looked like a complete different person. Um, and so in my head, I thought I had gone to my afterlife or like my, my spirit's destination in the other realm. Um, and I thought this person that was coming to check on me was my life's soulmate. And I said, oh my God, like what is happening? I can't believe I finally got to meet you. Do you know how many shitty guys I had to go through in my life to finally get here? I finally met my soulmate. Um, <laughs> and I started like laughing and like crying while like, hysterically talking at the same time like oh my god I've seen you in so many of my trips and it's so great to finally be united with you um I was just going on and on and on thinking I had met my twin flame some male spirit that has been with me through my life and I was talking to him as if he was the love of my life and he had been by my side through everything <laughs> and then I said something like oh and then that one time where this happened to me you would know because you were there with me in Las Vegas right 
And he was like, no, I'm not from Las Vegas. And suddenly that's when it clicked. I'm like, okay, this is not my soulmate that has gone through reincarnations of life with me. This is not like the God of my universe. This is just my trip sitter that I am making it sound like I'm crazy in love with. And I just suddenly like sat up and I was like, mm. <laughs> like <laughs> it was so awkward. As soon as I was instantly like snapped into reality, a sense of embarrassment came over me. First of all, because I had just spilled out so much about my personal life to the stranger. And second of all, because the stranger now thinks I'm like obsessed with them or something. So I didn't relax and integrate the trip. I was so focused on the embarrassment that for about an hour or two after the trip, that's all I had focused on. And I was like, wow, I just spent all that money and wasted all that time to embarrass myself. I don't feel any different. And I was like, what was the point of that? But slowly after more hours and more days passed, a lot of small details of the trip started coming back. As I relaxed and allowed these memories to come in and I could create connections of meanings, um, as well as once I started going out and doing things, I would see certain things that would kind of give me like a flashback and remind me of something that I had forgotten. One of them being um, when I was sitting down and had my hands on this guy's face trying to connect with them, the guy's face morphed through many different faces of men of my past, if that makes sense. Um, whether it's serious relationships or casual relationships, men that maybe have hurt me, um, it was morphing through all those faces. And I think me creating that eye contact and connection with him was me trying to regain that trust and get past the trauma and hatred that maybe I had subconsciously built towards men. And unfortunately, this guy, um, my mind used as a symbol or representation for the male energy. And that's why it morphed through all the different phases of men that have wronged me. And while I was trying to create that connection with him, every time I started distrusting him and thinking he's moving his eyes because he doesn't want to let me into this realm or maybe I'm not ready. All those doubts were creating the darkness. And as I just surrendered to the universe and let go of fear and just breathe deeply, I felt all that trauma that was built up from the past being released. And that's why I felt free. I felt like I had finally escaped all of that stuff that had been built up and following me for years. Um, things that I had thought I had healed from, but actually was still holding on to subconsciously, had exited my body. And I think that's why when he came over to check on me and he was the first thing I saw he was still the representation of a male energy and my perspective or relationship with the male entity had been renewed and that's why I was like wow you're perfect like I love you like I've been through so much to get here because it was like starting a clean slate and I had finally had a fresh, pure love for the male energy without all the past attachment issues or abandonment issues, whatever. It is kind of strange to me though, that when he was looking over at me from above, he genuinely looked like a different face and it really is a male face that I have seen in other trips. So it makes me wonder not only maybe was he a representation of my relationship with the male energy or my inner masculine energy, maybe this sounds crazy, but maybe 
my actual spiritual other realm soulmate did channel through this person for a moment. It genuinely felt like there was an energy there that I felt an instant soul connection with that I felt like had been there with me through my whole journey of life. Um, and that's why I spilled so much because I thought they had seen everything I've been through with me. Um, so that's why I think it could either be, you know, that my true spiritual soulmate channeled there for a second, or that it was a union with my feminine and masculine inner energy within myself, finally being at peace with each other and loving the duality. When people say 5-MeO DMT is like being reborn again, that is so, so, so true. I feel like this was the continuation of my previous DMT trip where I saw myself dying in the end. And here I fought through the death. I surrendered and stopped fearing and then ascended to the other side. I was rebirthed into light and love and beauty and just a blank slate. As more days went on too, I started to remember what I had actually seen when I was down in the fetal position. Um, what I saw was, I don't know if it was like a future version of myself or another dimension version of myself, but I was like tan in a bikini on a motorcycle going through the roads of Tulum and like speaking gibberish with all these other people on the road. And we were all just like laughing and having the time of our lives. It was just a full of life, energetic, worry-free version of myself. And I think feeling that feeling of rebirth and seeing and feeling that happiest, joyful version of myself and visualizing the metaphor, the visual representation I had of my self-limiting beliefs pulling me down and how I could overcome them with light has really translated into my real life where I'm now aware of the things in my life that are creating that darkness, these self-limiting beliefs I've created or these things that I am allowing to hold me back in life. And I am now on a path to cutting out all those things. Um, and there is so much more clarity in the way I want to move forwards. And the thing is, I've always known how I want to move forward. I have just been creating excuses. Um, and I don't know why I took visualizing it that way to actually be ready to cut ties with all of that. Um, this last association is a little bit just more fun and I thought it was really cool and crazy um, because some of you guys, one of my subscribers even no noticed that my favorite band is King Gizzard. I even have a signed album cover by them. And during my time in Tulum, I kept walking or biking past these signs on the road that say, if not now, when? And while I was in Tulum, King Gizzard released a song called, if not now, then when? I was like, wow, what are the odds? That's just a sign to take this uh, bufo. And yesterday when I got home, I watched the music video for that song and the music video literally feels like it was made about my trip, which sounds so like narcissistic or like paranoid to think that all of this aligned just over my trip. But it is just really a crazy coincidence that in this music video, there is a girl who is going around and seeing all the things she loves getting sucked up by a darkness that she is holding on to. And the darkness she's holding on to also kind of looks like a solar eclipse. Um, and this darkness kind of represents her shadow self. 
the same way I saw my doubts and fears and anxieties taking over my whole being. But as I learned and said in my previous DMT video, once you stop fearing the darkness and learning to work with it, you will break free. And that's what I finally experienced in this experience with 5-MeO DMT. I am currently editing this video and wow, is the story a mess. Um, but it's only been a few days since the trip. Um, I feel like my mind is still trying to tie it all together. And it was such a profound and chaotic experience that I don't think it is possible to tell in like a normal linear storyline. Um, so that's what it is. Um, I also forgot to mention that one of my takeaways from that trip, um, because I was trying so hard to create that eye contact for connection with this person and realize that the only connection I needed is with myself. Um, so since I've been starting a new practice, which is so silly, but it's been so amazing. And now every day for just a few seconds, I stare in the mirror deep into my own eyes and breathe kind of reenacting that whole experience but this time with my own eyes and let me tell you it's beautiful please do like this video and subscribe to this channel to hear more trip reports um follow me on my spiritual journey or whatever experiences come across life thanks for tuning in bye